you're at the high level for the more significant bits. In the previous videos, we looked at the traditional user interfaces for the IMSA 8080. First of all, uh, the CPA front panel, which is, it has the address and data switches and a series of LEDs to represent the state of the machine. In the second video, we looked at using a connected terminal and we saw some examples of running CPM 2.2. Over the life of the IMSA 8080, more and more interface cards became available. Most people would have acquired some form of uh, floppy disk interface. The traditional setup was a dual set of 8-inch floppy disks. IMSA also released uh, a character-based uh, video display card called the VIO uh, and, and a keyboard, which removed the necessity to buy a separate uh, serial terminal. Kremenko uh, began by creating the Kremenko Dazzler, arguably the first ever video graphic, color video graphics card for a personal computer. With a replica machine based on a microcontroller, it can become quite difficult to reproduce these hardware user interfaces. But thanks to the choice of the ESP32 microcontroller, which has both a dual core processor and a Wi-Fi network interface, I've been able to create a desktop user interface that simulates all of these other forms of I.O. and delivers the output to a standard evergreen web browser, in this case Chrome. So let's have a look at this desktop UI. While it's a little modern for the era that the IMSA 8080 existed in, it certainly uh, looks a lot like a, a modern desktop, but the functions are a lot more simplified. So the first thing to note is that I have um, virtualized the, five, the six command switches from the CPA front panel through this desktop user interface. So when we open the CPA window, which is a virtual device for the uh, CPA front panel, when I turn on the physical power switch on the, f on the uh, physical front panel, you'll notice the power switch toggles and the machine is in a wait state. So now we can use the uh, soft keys on the desktop UI to start the machine uh, and to reset the machine. But that's only going to be interesting if we're looking at the console. And I have booted the machine up with the VIO boot-based boot ROM, which makes the character-based VIO graphics card the console. So now when I start the machine, we'll see the CPM operating system command prompt appear on the CRT device, which is uh, the CPM device connected to the VIO graphics card. One of the nice features here is not everybody likes a white screen, so we can click through and have green screen or amber screen. And we can issue standard CPM commands from here. Using the reset key on the virtualized CPA uh, command switches, if we hit a standard reset, we effectively get a warm boot of the operating system. If we do an external clear, then we effectively get a cold boot of the CPM operating system. Now the other console device that is available is a standard uh, VT100 um, terminal, serially connected, but again this is virtualized and we can transfer control from the CRT device to the TTY device by using standard CPM commands. And now the TTY device or the serial connected terminal has control of the console. And then we can transfer com uh, control back to the CRT device. One of the advantages of the serially connected console 
is that it has a scroll history, so we can scroll backwards, whereas the CRT or VIO device, um, being a character-based uh, RAM-mapped graphics device, has no scroll history. The next device of interest would be the disk drives, and we have on the uh, IMSA 8080 replica, we have four uh, simulated floppy disk drives, and here they are uh, on the desktop user interface. We can uh, hover over them and get a tooltip which tells us which disk is mounted in each one of them. We can also eject a disk, and we're asked to confirm that that's what we want to do. Uh, we can either eject it or uh, not eject it. But if we want to start changing disks, uh, say for example we want to take the uh, Zork disk that's in drive D and eject that, now we need a, a way of putting a new disk in. Of course, at that point we want to turn to our trusty disk box where we can uh, upload disk images by dragging and dropping from a, desktop, a standard desktop file explorer. And we can take a disk image from here and simply drag and drop it into one of the floppy disks and it's now mounted. Some of the other devices of interest, and we'll quickly walk through each of them, uh, would be the Kremenko Dazzler. So the Kremenko Dazzler, uh, one of its supported graphics modes is uh, 64 by 64 pixels in 16 colors. So if we ran, run the standard kaleidoscope demo, we'll see the Dazzler, the virtual Dazzler device operating. Uh, it gets a bit more interesting just now as the kaleidoscope kicks in. It would be a common thing to also connect a line printer to your IMSA 8080. And so to enable that, uh, I've also done a virtualized line printer for the desktop user interface. This opens in a separate window in the browser. So if I open the line printer, uh, we can actually see whatever was previously um, sent to the line printer the last time it was used. Um, we can reset the contents, in other words, you know, page eject and start off with a clean piece of paper. Uh, for those of you who are uh, Americans or North Americans in the audience, you may not recognize this kind of blue lined printer paper. You'd be more familiar with green bar, so you've got the option of changing to that. And of course, if you want to do high quality documents on a white background, uh, you can change to plain white paper. And of course, you can print all of these because this is just a standard um, rendered page in a browser. You can print these to your own physical printer uh, just as they, as they are pages from the browser. Let's change back to blue bar so we can see what's going on. And if I change back to the console and do the usual CPM instruction of a control P to redirect output to the printer and do a directory and a survey. When we change to the printer, we can see the output. Further to that, changing back to the console and turning off the printer redirect, we can also um, use pip and send a file content to the printer. And we'll see it print out um, a lot faster than a line printer, 80 column line printer would have worked in the day. Um, at the moment, the line printer doesn't support any control characters. It's just a plain 80 column text printer. Uh, looking at some of the other virtualized devices on the desktop, uh, we have a system device which brings up statistics and information about the host effectively on the microcontroller. So we see the version of the uh, ESP32 port of the IMSA 8080 simulation that's running. Uh, we also see what processor mode it's in. Currently I'm running in Z80 mode rather than 8080 and I'm running at four uh, megahertz. We can see how much host memory, this is not the available CPM memory on the machine, but free memory left on the microcontroller, uh, total uptime, uh, details about the network interface, our environment variables, which we'll look at how to set shortly, 
um, paths to storage on the SD card, the currently mounted disks, some information about error states, um, boot petitions for the microcontroller, and even uh, the, the tasks running on the microcontroller and their relative utilization. From this window, it's possible to also reboot the machine, but I'm not going to demonstrate that now. Uh, we, but we can also edit those uh, configuration files that affect things such as the environment. Um, so in here, we can come and change the host name, um, the web server port that this, vert that this desktop user interface is served up to, the SSID of the uh, wireless network that we're connecting to, and all of the standard uh, system configuration parameters that are available to the uh, IMSE SIM virtual machine are here as well. But not many of these actually matter in our environment. Uh, the, one that, the one that does is the amount of val available RAM and some of the serial I.O. parameters uh, are current as well. I've recently started to build a uh, an inbuilt library of manuals. So uh, we, you can open the manual and uh, this lets you actually drag and drop from your standard uh, desktop file explorer, um, any PDF file into this folder and it'll be stored on the SD card in the replica. And that way you'll always have your documentation to hand. Although it's not lightning fast because this little web server struggles to serve up particularly large files. Um, but I can open the CPM 2.2 manual from Digital Research and we can search through that because now we're just in the standard browser PDF viewer. Um, I can open up the documentation on the Kremenko Dazzler if I'm interested in reading about that or I need to remember how the pixel alignment works if I'm starting to develop an application that's going to output on the Dazzler. Um, so, you know, that can come in handy as well. The final thing I'm going to demonstrate is um, another invention from the Kremenko company. Uh, maybe a little known fact that Kremenko were arguably also the inventors of the first ever digital video camera, um, the Cyclops. And although somebody did a physical reconstruction of the Cyclops, I think only last year, um, I've worked a, I worked out a way to hijack uh, or repurpose the web camera attached to your desktop computer or laptop um, running the browser and you'll notice that this device starts off not connected in fact all of these devices uh, are connected to the web server using web sockets here we need to actually connect the camera and now we can change to drive D where I've got the Cyclops software installed and we're going to run exactly the code that was in the uh, Cyclops user manual uh, to be entered in a machine language that reads the image from the Cyclops and displays it on the Dazzler. So here we go. And that's me in all my pixelated glory saying hi. Oop, get a hand up. Saying hi at just under one frame per second. So that concludes this quick tour of the desktop user interface. When I power off the front panel, uh, you'll notice that um, the desktop detects that and says that the system is now offline and will endeavor to reload the desktop automatically in a, number of, in a matter of seconds. Um, the desktop's always available, even when the machine's off, so long as, as the replica's powered. And that way, uh, we can be set up and ready to watch the machine start again when we power it on. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's giving you something to look forward to, uh, an interest in uh, the MSA 8080 replica that I've made. If you like this video or you've got an interest in the replica, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also take a look at thehighnibble.com where you'll find further information about the replica.